Friday, January the 1st. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a fishing report today. Uh, the fishing is good. It's pretty much the same thing that's going on, so you can go back to my last week's fishing report, and a lot of the same patterns are working and will continue to work for several weeks. What we're going to talk a little bit about today is uh, battery maintenance and issues that people have when you get low voltage on your fish finders. Now the battery maintenance is pretty simple, whether you've got an acid battery or a maintenance free gel or AGM battery, you just want to make sure your battery terminals are clean and that your battery stays charged up. The hardest thing on a battery is I know a lot of you have put your boats up for the season, is letting a battery set either outside or even if they're inside or down there at the boat dock, not being fully charged in extreme cold weather. Now, extreme warm weather will do the same thing, but on these conditions right now, you know, if you're not using your boat at all, probably every six weeks or so, you want to go down there and charge the batteries up. Now, even though you put the boat away when they were fully charged, the, there's computers on the engines, circuit boards on trolling motors, something is always drawing a little bit of juice out of these batteries, so when it sets there for a month or two, It'll wear them down and you need to get them charged back up. Just like your lawnmower batteries. Put your lawnmowers away in October, November. Grass starts getting green in April or March. You go to fire up the lawnmower, it's dead as a doornail. Charge it up, seems like it lasts for a week or two. Pretty good chance that you've ruined your battery. So if you do the same with your lawnmower batteries, they'll last a lot longer as well. Now this particular battery here, uh, I've run these same batteries for four to five years, fishing 200 to 225 days a year. So if you properly take care of your batteries, it's unreal how long they'll last. Now, a lot of the issues uh, that we have nowadays where we're running three and four fish finders, power poles, hydraulic jack plates, and we seem to be running out of uh, battery power on the crank battery. What we have been doing is we've been running this 31 AGM battery for our crank battery. Even though there are batteries out there that have more cold crank in amps than this one does, they do not have the reserve power that this one does. And with everything that you're running, you need more reserve power than you do cold crank in amps. As long as the cold crank in amps meet what the outboard engine manufacturers require, that's great. You want that plus the more reserve power. The second biggest problem with the fish finders is we used to just, you know, find, find a power source, a positive and negative tie our graphs into it. These bigger units, these uh, 10 inch, 12 inch, even 16 inch units draw so much power that they are starving up there. So a lot of times you'll have graphs, they'll show that they have different voltage from the front graph to the back graph. And the reason that is, the wire that's feeding them is too small and there's a voltage drop between the units. And if you talk to whether it's either Lawrence, Garmin, uh, Hummingbird, the Tex, they require you to run a certain gauge wire from the battery all the way up to the units. My particular boat is I've got a positive and negative directly from the battery to my console units. Then I've got another set of positive and negative running up to my live scope and the front units. And if you look at the manufacturers, it will tell you what's out, what gauge wire that you need to use. What happens is when you tie into an accessory switch that already has several other electronic devices working off of that switch, you're starving your graphs for power and they'll do you know funky things sometimes they'll shut off they won't read properly i've seen boats where when people go to start their engines the graphs go off and people think that's they've got a weak battery that's not the case it's they've got an undersized supply wire going up to the units you know a, a good rule of thumb for me is if there's enough energy in the battery to crank the outboard, there's more than enough for it to run the graph. So if you're having issues with your graphs before you start changing batteries, check out your power sources, make sure you've got a big enough wire. Now, this particular battery, like I told you, we run it 
It's a, a deep cycle. I run it on the controller motor and the same one on the crank battery. As do a lot of the other pros. If you take uh, like all American champions, Marcus Sequoia, Jeremy Lawyer, they won several FLW events, uh, Bassmaster, Bassmaster Classic Qualifier, Brian Snowden. That's exactly what these guys run. They'll run this AGM, 31 AGM on their crank, and they'll run the same thing on their trolling motor batteries. Now, if a guy wants to save a little bit of money, a lot of times the 31 AGM is a little overkill on a 36 volt system. You can get by with a, a 20, Group 27 which will save you uh, around $50 or a little bit more per battery. And you'll still never run out of power even on the windiest days. Now, ProGuide Battery has launched a new website. It's uh, ProGuideBattery.com. And they're going to be putting a lot of information in there in the next few months to come. They've got a, a new lithium battery that I am currently testing as are several other pros so there's going to be information out on that. Now if you've got any information about any of your batteries as far as what size batteries you need to run or having any issues the best way to contact them is go to Facebook to uh, Pro Guide Batteries Facebook page and that'll be the quickest way you can get a response back from them. So keep an eye out on that new website page that they've launched. Uh, they've got a lot of new things coming out and in a month or two I'll be doing a little video on some stats that I've got with my new, my new lithium batteries and my uh, power pole battery charger. So till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.